hooked him up. Fish on. Looks like a good one. Middle of the day. Jumping around a ton. I get my deucer out of here. Feels like a real good one. He's right at the hole right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna stud chunker Malax Walla and that pink and gold cast master. Came up, absolutely smoked it. Awesome fish there. I'm gonna go. going on guys today we are out here one of my favorite walleye lakes we're out here on the lax lake in minnesota we're doing a bunch of walleye fishing it's the middle of the day now i've caught a bunch of walleyes already um but i wasn't sure about what to make a video on today so i'm gonna make it on the one thing that i don't see a lot of videos on and the one thing that catches way more fish all season long all winter long than anything else that's being very efficient on the ice um you know the terms get thrown around like ice trolling hole hopping stuff like that but today i'm going to talk about how you can come out here on a lot of these lakes especially like mille Lacs, where you have a huge body of water a ton of structure and fish roaming around both structure and open water um, and how you can basically find fish quickly um, stay on them throughout the day and uh, yeah just overall catch a whole bunch more fish so today we're going to talk about things that make me more efficient on the ice all right so first things first it starts with obviously finding a spot to fish right and the biggest thing with that is having you know basically having a gps with lake master or navionics mapping on your machine right so whether you're in a truck whether you're in a snowmobile whether you're walking um, whether you're on a four-wheeler like i am basically you have to have the information in front of you to know where your spots are it saves a million hours and a million ice holes um, when you can just look right at the graph and see where you are so today we're out here fishing mud flats on malax and we're coming to one which i have not yet fished and basically you can see the flat here i'm not sure if the camera is going to focus on it but you can see here you know it doesn't take me any time at all to locate this piece of structure because i got my lake master map right on the four wheeler here and as i'm bombing around you know i know right where everything is i got all my waypoints on here and uh, it's super easy to just pull up and start fishing so you know i know right where i am and that is huge you have to have a gps with some kind of lake mapping uh with you otherwise it's just going to take way too long to um, get on fish and basically the way I wire mine up because I know this question will get asked I wear it straight into my battery You know if you have on my four-wheeler because I never really hole hop with this unit I don't really use it for sonar, but I want my maps on there And that's why I keep it here I transfer all my waypoints from my summer GPS onto this one because this one sits on my four-wheeler all winter long So I know where I'm at and uh you know, if you have like a Helix 5 ice unit that has GPS, um, I'm pretty sure all the Helixes have GPS. So if you're running like one as a flasher, you know, get a Lake Master chip for it right away so you can see where you are as you're walking around and hole hopping. Um, that'll save you a lot of time. But anyways, we found our spot now. Now the next thing we have to do is obviously drill some holes. And fishing on Mille Lacs is not drilling two holes and fishing. It's drilling a million holes and uh, kind of gritting a spot out, so to speak. You know, you're gonna catch a way more fish if you punch a ton of holes to start before you even start fishing. Then if you drill a hole, do a little fishing. Drill another hole, do a little fishing. So the first thing I wanna do is drill this out, right? So basically I'm gonna kind of show you how I do that. Looking at the spot on my map, I'm gonna show you exactly how I drill out a spot. So it's time to drill some holes. And once again, it comes back to what we have on the machine here. You know, nothing's tucked away in a sled. Um, nothing's hard to get at. So my ice auger is mounted right up here. There's a million different kind of auger racks you can buy, whether you're on a snowmobile, four wheeler, whatever it is, you can mount them to the front, you can mount them to the back, you can mount them in a tube on the side, kind of whatever you want. But the, the point is being that your auger is very easy to get at and it's real quick to go around and drill a bunch of holes. Now, the way I like to drill my holes is basically if I pull up to a mud flat, like we're on right here, I don't want to just punch holes right on the top, right? I want to cover a variety of depths. It's the middle of the day. These fish are roaming around probably faster and a little bit more spread out than they will be this evening. And uh, I kind of want holes all over a bunch of different depths now. I'm starting down here on this end of the flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get kind of right on the offset, outside corner of it in the deepest spot. And I'm going to kind of drill up and over it. And then I'm going to turn around on my four-wheeler. I'm going to drill up and over it again. And I'm going to kind of make grid it out. I'm going to make a line of holes going this way like this, a line of holes going this way like this, and then a line of holes outside in that deeper stuff. So it's important when you're drilling holes to cover a variety of depths, number one, and to get a big enough spread. You know, it could be very likely that after I get this spread, you know, there's going to be just fish on one side of this or just fish up on the top of this. And then it lets me know I got to drill some more holes up on the top to follow those fish around. 
but basically the way I drill holes, and if you don't feel comfortable doing it this way, you don't have to, but I basically stand on my four-wheeler, start the auger, punch a hole, and that way I can see where I am at all times on my GPS. I'll drive 10 feet, drill another hole. Drive 15 feet, drill another hole. Drive 10 feet, drill another hole. Turn around, come back over the top and drill another line, line after line after line. And this is kind of the quickest way for me to do it. And the big bonus is while I'm drilling holes, I can see right where I am because my graph's right on my four-wheeler. So really whether you're drilling out a big flat like this or if you're drilling out a small piece of structure and want to make sure you're right where you are, um, it's super easy to just kind of sit on the four-wheeler, hop off if you have to, punch a hole, and then you know right where you are. Once I've got all my holes in this kind of configuration, then I'm ready to fish. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, obviously we need a rod. Now, like I said, th none of this stuff is so tucked away that it's impossible to get it. All my gear that I have on the on the four-wheeler here, it's super easy to get it, it's super easy to fish. So, we got a rod. Now, the important part about when you're hole hopping is generally to have a longer rod, um, so you're not always sitting right over the hole. A longer rod helps you hole hop better. Most of the time, you know, most of the rods that are meant for fishing outside of a shack are like 36 inches plus. And uh, so get yourself a rod that's like 36 plus, I would say, for walleyes. Um, doesn't really matter too much, you know, brand-wise, but uh, get yourself a longer rod. You're going to be a lot happier when you're doing this hole hopping program. Bait-wise, you want to fish something that gets noticed, number one, and something that doesn't take a long time to get to the bottom. The reason for that being, I have no idea if there's any fish on this spot, right? So I want to fish something big that gets noticed very quickly, either something flashy or something big that I can yank around up high in the water column and get noticed. So the two baits I have on is a heavy Castmaster here that's been catching fish all day for me. The other one I have tied on at all times, especially when I'm still searching for fish, is an Acme Hyper Rattle. Very heavy bait, I can drop it to slush. I'm not going through and clearing all these holes out um, with a scoop, so something that can get down there very fast. So when I get this down there real fast and hold it five, six feet off bottom and start pumping that rod, that thing walks that circle and is real erratic. And even if a fish isn't gonna eat this, they're gonna pop up and at least I'm gonna see them on my graph and know that there's fish in the area. So the other thing when you're doing this kind of run and gun hole hopping deal is you don't wanna be digging around for a minnow bucket. There's not a ton of room on here for a minnow bucket, so I I got a small bucket in here for kind of like the main amount of minnows, but I keep one of these bait pucks on me. So that way when I'm hole hopping, I don't have to carry a bucket around. It's real quick to just pull out a minnow head here, put it on the bait, and uh, we're good to go. So, you know, it's super simple. Like I said, everything's right at my fingertips, and that's kind of the way I always design my setups. But um, my graph's right in here. You know, I like to keep my graph protected, obviously. Fits right in my storage box here. Pull the graph out and I'm ready to hole hop, it's that simple. All right, so we're set up and we're fishing. Now, catching fish at this point is kind of secondary to just figuring out whether there's fish here or not, right? So, you know, a lot of times, like let's say walleyes are more finicky right now, let's say, um, you know, it might be more tempting to go down right next to the bottom and just bounce that spoon real nice and soft. But when you're looking for fish, you get that bait up five, six feet off the bottom, so a lot of fish can see it. You know, if you're jigging right here, the walleye's not looking right there most of the time if he's 20 yards this way, but he can see that thing up high, which is kind of the reason I like to jig up high. And fish are not scared, especially in Mille Lacs, to come up five, six feet to hit a bait at all, but your bait gets noticed a lot more. The other thing which you're not gonna see me do is just do this little rhythm right here, right? That barely bounce. Rarely does that actually work, but I like to really rip that spoon pop it, get it moving, and basically that thing's flashing and rolling and darting all over the place up there, and a lot it's getting noticed by a lot more fish. If there's a fish over here, a fish over here, he's gonna know this thing's here, and when you jig high up off the bottom, you're gonna be able to see those fish come into you. If you're jigging right on the bottom, it doesn't give those fish to come under you and mark. You're never gonna see them because they're gonna be belly on the bottom in order to come up to your bait. So keeping that bait up high, jigging it real real kind of aggressively I'll say is the important part now I've already been here for probably talking for like a minute just on this and uh, I haven't seen a fish so the next thing to do is reel up and move to the next hole you know I'm not wasting time if I drop one thing I always say it's kind of like open water fishing you know if you drill a hole on top of a fish's head and you throw your flasher down and that fish is off the bottom you're gonna see the fish right so you know I'm assuming because I was jigging there for you know a minute let's say Anything around me would have seen that when it came over to me. Nothing came over to me, so I'm assuming there's no fish in my little vicinity here. And I'm gonna move right to my next hole and keep working the grid. All right, so there's kind of one final piece to the puzzle here, which is uh, you're gonna get colder doing this, right? You're not in a shack 
you're constantly buzzing around different spots checking for fish right so the biggest thing is here probably dress with good gear you know be dressed for the conditions it's pretty nice out today today's like 25 degrees out so i don't need any you know crazy stuff going on but you know i always wear basically the same kind of stuff and i've done a video on this in the past but i'll kind of link it below and it all starts with having some of the best base layers that you can have you know big huge puffy ice suits are great um, but without the right base layers um, they're pretty much useless so um, i've been working with sims for a while now and they make some of the best products for really year-round fishing whether it's super hot in the summer super cold in the winter fishing there is um, there's one pair of long underwear that i absolutely love um, which is the fjord long underwear i'll link that below i put like primaloft pants on above that and then my insulated sims bibs and with this i basically never get cold in any kind of conditions um, basically when you're drilling this many holes you're gonna want waterproof boots on even if it's not watery outside um, or on top of the ice so I always wear my knee-high Sims boots um, and then some other great base layers like I said I'll link all this below but being warm and comfortable all day keeps you on the move you know the second you start getting too cold and want to sit in the shack you know things start to go bad you start to slow down now there's a lot of times you might do this one time on one spot and sit there all day because you're catching so many fish which is great uh, but most of the time you do end up moving around, you know, two, three, four, five times throughout the day at least. Um, and there's a lot of times back in Hayward, I might move around 20, 30 times like this a day um, on a lot smaller pieces of structure. So having the right kind of stuff, you know, I keep, I've got my pissy fun backpack here that I keep gloves in, uh, my food and water for the day. It's also got all my jigs in here. I've got a whole bunch of spare hand warmers in here, spare pair of gloves in here in case they get wet. Um, so like I said, being very mobile, you kind of have everything right at your fingertips. I don't have to drag a big sled around with me. I don't have to go back to my shack to get something. Everything I need for the entire day to catch fish is on this machine and ready to go at any second. So, you know, this is kind of the biggest thing for me. Um, and it's no the number one way I love to fish. It's super addicting for me because I'm super high energy. I like moving around. I love structure fishing. Um, and I love covering a lot of water like this. So it's, this is absolutely the way, way I love to fish, whether I'm catching two fish a day um, or 50 walleyes a day. So um, hopefully this is beneficial for you guys. I know this wasn't a super crazy like here's a highlight reel of me catching walleyes um, this is gonna be much more useful for you guys than a video like that so you know if you're new to ice fishing think about mobility think about this kind of run and gun approach you know and see what you can do to kind of you know start uh, getting into this kind of a deal because you will catch more fish all winter if you've been ice fishing forever and you're like man all I do is sit in a shack all day you know start tweaking your machine start tweaking your four-wheeler snowmobile um, whatever you're doing to make yourself more mobile and you're definitely gonna catch a bunch more fish so thank you guys for watching um, I got to get back to my spot which I was fishing which had a lot of fish on it kind of for the evening window here and uh, hopefully pound a whole bunch more walleyes and make another video for you guys this evening so thank you guys for watching if you're not yet please subscribe and stay tuned for more content